Hi everybody, welcome to this JMeter video tutorial, how to use a counter and loop controller in a JMeter test. My name is Jason Silverman. I work at a company called BlazeMeter, which provides a SaaS platform for load and performance testing. I'll speak a little bit about BlazeMeter at the end of today's uh, tutorial in a few minutes, uh, but for now, let's focus on the topic at hand. The topic today we'll be examining uh, is how to use a counter in JMeter. Uh, a counter, as JMeter describes it, allows the user to create uh, a counter that can be referenced anywhere in the thread group. The counter config lets the user configure a starting point, a maximum, and the increment. The counter will loop from start to max, uh, then start over with the start, continuing on like that until the test is ended. But what kind of test scenarios require a counter to be used in the first place? So, when it comes to building various types of advanced JMeter test plans, which include not only replaying a recorded test scenario with an increased number of users, but something more complex than that, you will likely to, uh, need to use some form of a counter. Now, these scenarios can include test plans that are perhaps dependent on external data sources like a CSV data set, JDBC result set, or previous response, or that the target is just to run a test or part of a test several times, and each time have a dynamic parameter which represents a, uh, a current iteration number. So now let's describe how to use a counter and a loop controller in JMeter in order to efficiently run these complex tests. So we'll start by talking about using the counter config element. Now let's imagine a scenario in which you need to create five entities in a loop using the HTTP request sampler and each entity name has to be unique. So one way to go about this is to copy and paste the relevant requests five times so that the test plan appears um, as in the uh, image that you can see on the screen. I would say that this is um, not the uh, best way to do this. It's a bad way to go about this. Um, it works and it works fine, but what if you need to do it 100 times or 200 times as opposed to five times? What if you need uh, one more parameter um, to add to the HTTP request? Uh, code duplication isn't a very good idea by itself. It's better to design usable components in the form of pluggable modules uh, use loops or and other logic controllers in order to keep your test as short as possible. The better way to do this is to use a loop controller and a counter. Now let's implement the same scenario using a single HTTP request run via uh, per, uh, parameterized iterations. So to do so, add a loop controller and set the loop count to five and define a counter inside the loop controller and configure it as follows. Now I'm gonna show uh, this on the screen, how it looks in JMeter in, in just one moment, but let's just talk about the different parameters um, and what we can, uh, what values we should put in them for our scenario. So the start scenario, this is the initial counter uh, value. Let's make it one. Uh, just to note, if you leave it blank, the counter will start from zero. Uh, increment, this value will be added to the current counter value once the counter is hit. Let's make it one as well, as we need to replicate the above behavior. Maximum, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if it's left blank, the counter value will increment uh, forever. But when it is set and the current counter value exceeds the maximum value, the counter starts over. Uh, so it's either fine to leave it blank or to set it to five or above. Going, continuing, we have the number format, um, which you can change the output number format using this parameter. Uh, if it's left blank, the values will be, um, I'll call it normal, like one, two, and three, etc. But if you put zero, zero into the field, the values will be prefixed by double zeros like zero, zero, one, zero, zero, two, and so on. Uh, for this exercise, let's leave it as is. And finally, uh, the reference name, which is the most important setting. Here you can define a JMeter var uh, variable name that 
will be holding the current um, uh, sorry the current counter value. It's better to um, make it something self-explanatory. Uh, firstly, so that if you're collaborating with others, others can understand what it's referring to. But also, if you want to revisit your test at a later time, um, you would be easily to be able to identify um, and understand what you meant by calling it as such. So uh, best to call it a, um, a simple name. So let's call it current value. With all that said, the counter configuration should therefore look like what you see here. You can see the different uh, parameters, name, start, increment. Uh, we decide to leave maximum and number format uh, blank. And reference name is counter underscore value. Now, let's amend the HTTP request sampler name uh, so that it would take the current counter value and send it to the server. You have the option to modify the sampler label in order to differentiate between different samplers in listeners and identify a problematic request in case of a failure. So change your HTTP, HTTP request as follows. <coughs> you can see it with the counter value on the screen here and also in the send parameters with the request box as well. When you look at the view results tree, uh, listener output, you should see that the results um, are identical as if they were implemented in our first uh, method, which uh, the copy and paste method, um, which I, again, I, I don't think is so efficient to do, but I just want to show you that the results um, are, are identical. So let me just, um, you can see here, I'm just going to go back a few slides to our initial scenario um, if we did it by just by duplication. And you can see that it's the same, but in a much more efficient way. We got to it. OK. Now, if for some reason the counter config element does not play for you, there are other approaches to get the current iteration number. These include uh, using the counter config element. I know that sounds repetitive, but I will explain it in a second. Uh, using the underscore counter function and then also using scripting. So using the counter config element, define a counter inside the thread group and configure it as follows. I included both the instructions and the image here on the screen. So you can see um, the start will be one, increment will be one, reference name can be any variable name. In this case, we're gonna call it iteration. And you also wanna check the track counter independently for each user box, um, which is required um, to avoid double counting when you have more than one virtual user. Using the counter, the underscore counter function, um, Jamie, Jamie provides the, the counter function, which returns an incrementing number starting from one and increasing by one each time. It has two modes. Um, the first is if, as if each thread, which is a virtual user, has its own counter uh, instance, or alternatively, if all threads share the same counter instance. In our scenario, the relevant function will be, which you can see on the screen, um, dollar sign, you have a bunch of symbols here, counter, parentheses, true, comma, close parentheses. Okay? In this case, true stands for an individual counter for each individual user, which is, we decided to go with the first mode. Uh, just a note here, uh, don't put the function under any iteration provider, such as um, controllers like loop controller, while controller, or for each controller. If you do that, it'll be hit multiple times and the resulting value won't be reliable. Now, uh, if the above options are not applicable, you can always fall back to scripting. Uh, as you might be aware, JMeter supports several scripting languages, the most popular being JavaScript uh, via Rhino or uh, uh, Nashorn. It's uh, used internally in JMeter, uh, for example, in the if controller. It also supports BeanShell uh, via the BSH interpreter. Uh, BeanShell provides easier access to JMeter and underlying Java APIs, or any language supported by JSR, JSR sorry, 223 JCP. Um, we recommend Groovy 
um, to use with JSR223 test elements in JMeter. Each of these languages have access to the VARS predefined variable, which stands for the JMeter variables class instance. Um, that provides read-write access to all JMeter variables in scope. The JMeter variable scope is limited to the current thread group only. So getting the current thread group in iteration is as simple as what you can see on your screen. VARS uh, dot get iteration and then open and close parentheses. Remember that this way you will get the thread group iteration number only. The other iteration providers like we talked about in the controllers like the loop controller or while controller will not be considered and won't cause the iteration to increment, which is what we want in this. Uh, we don't want it to increment. Um, here's an example of getting the current thread group iteration using the aforementioned three approaches. Um, you can see um, the counter, um, the counter function, uh, the scripting language, which in this case was bean shell, also on top there, we have the, using the counter config element all, and you can see the results in the view results tree. Uh, usually the iteration number is combined with the current virtual user number. The current virtual user ID can be retrieved using the thread number function. So hopefully this JMeter tutorial clarifies how to use different counter approaches in JMeter tests. Now, um, before I um, end, I just want to tell you, I told you I would tell you a little bit about BlazeMeter and how it's related here. So let's get that on the screen. So BlazeMeter is 100% compatible with Apache JMeter, but it's a platform to run and store all your JMeter tests uh, in the cloud. When I say it's 100% compatible, you can take any JMeter script, including JMeter plugins even, um, but also all the functions and all the controllers, um, it's 100% compatible. Uh, you just upload that script into um, BlazeMeter. The benefits that BlazeMeter gives, um, being that it's in the cloud, is um, it's a lot more scalable. That you can uh, really very simply run tests up to one million um, concurrent users um, in over 20 geolocations around the world. We have great reporting. Uh, you can get real-time reports in uh, beautiful graphs um, and statistics, which are then um, you can share with your colleagues uh, if you're working um, with with uh, as members of a team. And users, you can also compare reports um, from previous tests and view KPI trends. If you want to run your performance tests as part of the um, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of the CI CD process, we have integrations and plugins with leading CI platforms such as Jenkins and Team City, as well as the leading APM tools, um, AppDynamics, CA APM, um, New Relic, Dynatrace. We have um, integrations with all of them. Uh, and JMeter has a proxy recorder to record test plans, but BlazeMeter has a much better recorder and works much easier, much more functional. Uh, you can record any web app or, um, or uh, mobile app workflow um, from the user's perspective, and you can test anything. So that's it. Um, and uh, you can see, by the way, we have a lot of um, webinars and different tutorials on JMeter and a lot of different JMeter functions. With all that said, I just want to go back to our presentation for a second. Before I let you go, for more information um, about Apache JMeter uh, documentation and installation, you can go to um, jmeter.apache.org. For further questions about JMeter, obviously it's a great open source tool. They have a great support forum where people respond to a wide variety of JMeter questions and scenarios, and they respond pretty quickly, uh, from my experience. Um, you can see on the link on the screen there. Um, in addition, the BlazeMeter performance testing blog has a ton of information on JMeter, um, including uh, the topic of today's uh, JMeter tutorial about how to use a counter in a JMeter test. Um, it also has uh, information such as other open source testing tools um, and CI tools such as Jenkins and Selenium and a wide variety of, um, of 
blog posts related to CI and CD. That's at bladesminute.com slash blog. You can also check out our resources page, which has other video tutorials on JMeter and Jenkins and all of our webinar recordings and white papers and more. That's at blazemeter.com slash resources. And finally, um, for more information about BlazeMeter and to create your free BlazeMeter account, if you want to try it out um, and upload your JMeter scripts into um, BlazeMeter, you can go to um, www.blazeMeter.com. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining um, this video uh, tutorial of JMeter. Um, have a great day.